We're going to start this hour by crossing the pond for some showbiz news. And we'll have to start with the singer Lizzo, who says she's quitting because she is constantly up against lies. I wonder what Benjamin Butterworth has said to her. That comes a day <laughs> after she was criticised for headlining a fundraiser for <clears throat> President Joe Biden. But she's quitting music or quitting mu social media. Which one is it? What's going on? And who better to ask than our favourite showbiz guru, the journalist and author Nelson Aspen. Good evening, Nelson. So tell us, what is, what is your take on Lizzo? Well, good to see you guys. I have my own personal history with Lizzo. We can oh. get to that later. But no sooner did she get off the stage at Radio City Music Hall performing for that multi-million dollar fundraiser for President Biden than she made this rather cryptic and lengthy Instagram post. And, you know, you, you just said, is she quitting music? Is she quitting social music, uh, social media? But I think what's more concerning is the language when she said, it's starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I didn't oh, wow. sign up for this expletive. I quit. So that caused her millions of, of social media followers to be concerned for yes. her mental state. You know, is she, is she going to do some sort of self-harm? Even uh, far reaching as Paris Hilton tried to reassure her on Instagram. So there, there is some kind of concern. She was facing criticism because of performing for President Biden, that that would somehow make her pro-war because the, the fundraiser was interrupted by pro-Palestinian groups. But she does face a lot of bullying because of her weight, because of her race, and because of her outspokenness. She's also facing a lawsuit by some of her ex backup dancers alleging sexual harassment. So she's got a lot on her plate, and I think she needs to hire a social media manager so she doesn't get her hands dirty with the messiness of social media. So was that the other piece of drama at the uh, fundraiser then? The, the fact that well, the, well, the there, stage there was, was stormed? It was full of drama. Full, was the, it the really? Streets, everything was snarled here. Uh, the, you know, it, the elite Hollywood groups were fundraising for three presidents while former President Trump was attending the wake of a slain NYPD officer who was oh, tragically well, killed. Does that uh, tell you everything you need to know? I'll leave that to viewers' discretion. Very upsetting and, and, a, and a, a strange dichotomy uh, between uh, one group and the other as if we're not divided enough. Well, there we are. Right. And then there was the Michael Jackson biopic, which is, is coming out, but it's apparently causing a fair bit uh, of controversy, is it not? Well, anything, anything surrounding the, the so-called king of pop uh, controversy follows. I mean, uh, I, I was live on the air the day he passed away. I was reporting about Farrah Fawcett's death when I got the news in my ear that he had passed away. And I stayed on the air for seven hours. And then the next year of my life, I was running from Neverland Ranch to Forest Lawn Cemetery to the downtown L.A. courthouse to his Bel Air mansion. I mean, where Michael Jackson went controversy always followed. And that's the case with the film. However, I would say the most encouraging bit uh, about the film's production, and it is underway, is that it's from the producers of Bohemian Rhapsody. And we all celebrated seeing uh, the, the life of Freddie Mercury portrayed uh, as beautifully as it was told mm. in that film. So I do have uh, some high hopes for this film, uh, and we will see uh, we will see warts and all, we are told. In fact, in the press release, it says it's riveting and an honest portrayal, an epic cinematic film that will examine his triumphs and tragedies. So oh. hopefully we will get a fair uh, recounting of the story. His son, Prince Jackson, is involved on behalf of, of himself and the siblings uh, to make sure the story is told in the Jackson point of view. Right. Some people call Beyonce the 21st century Michael Jackson. Obviously, she just released her new album, Cowboy Carter. I think it's had the highest debut on Spotify so far this year with over 76 million streams. How has Nashville taken Beyonce releasing a country album? The statistics are staggering. And at the end of the day, it really is the bottom line that will prove uh, her staying power in the country music genre. And, you know, there was, as 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 Beyonce herself expected, there was a racist pushback uh, when she broke into the country music world. And her new album, Country uh, Cowboy Carter, actually has 27 tracks and celebrates uh, a lot of the sort of uh, pioneering black female country artists that came before Beyonce. But She's so talented and mo much of the music is so wonderful that I think she will um, 
eclipse any of the critics. It also helps that she has the support of none other than Dolly Parton. I mean, Dolly Parton's seal of approval will generally uh, smooth over anything. I mean, the woman helped find a vaccine for COVID, for goodness sake. But Miley Cyrus, Willie Nelson, everybody is on board with this. Not surprisingly, including Vice President Kamala Harris, who says that Beyonce is helping country music reclaim its black roots. That said, I will say it's almost impossible to listen to Texas Hold'em and not, you know, dance a little bit. She's done some, she's done some covers of famous country songs like Jolene by Dolly Parton, also a Beatles song, uh, River Dance, I believe. What do you make of these covers? Has she put her own twist on them or are the originals still the best? Well, I mean, it's that's uh, he said, she said kind of thing. But I think there's room for interpretation. I mean, her version of, of the Beatles' Blackbird is completely different from the Beatles' version, obviously. But it's it's sort of bridging the generational gaps. And it ha it takes on a new meaning for Beyonce's audience, which uh, there may not be many crossovers from the Beatles' audience to Beyonce's audience. But that's uh, that's what spreads the word and makes it interesting. So I, I, I'm fully in support of Beyonce uh, doing country music. Look at what it did for uh, Taylor Swift. All right, Nelson Aspen, thank you very much as ever for your insight there. Now, I'm going to turn to the panel and I want to ask you that question then that Nelson posed there, which was on the image difference between President Trump being at this memorial for a fallen police, slain police officer and then the three former presidents of the Democratic Party at this elite multimillionaire pop shindig, uh, shindig, rather. Do you think that there is a... Do you I mean, see... optically, it looks yeah. bad. Like, you can't deny that, that it looks bad. But at the same time, there may be another day where Trump is there doing his old little YMCA dance, shooting his AK-47, and, and Biden is there, like, handing out weapons and food to the Ukraine. So, you know. This must make even you see President Trump in a different light. A man <laughs> of the people. He's not a man of the people at all. I mean, look, President Trump <laughs> is the guy that when he was visiting France refused to go and visit the graves of American soldiers that had died and that wouldn't go there because it was pouring with rain. I mean, this is not a man who has any serious sense of service or respect at all. I dare say the only reason that he might have done what he did uh, the other day is precisely for the optimist. Manipulation. Yes, that is a much more likely scenario because Trump only uses people. He uses whatever groups he wants to use to get ahead and then as soon as they sort of go wait a minute you're not the guy you said you were he turns on them and it's all their fault so yeah it makes more sense actually that his people found out that they were going to be at this concert and they quickly arranged well, something. Hang on hang on well I'll be I'll ask you this question mm. but how how can it be right right that the Democrats were supposed to be that they purport to be the party of the working class now a lot of people watching this you've we heard of Lizzo being there other characters blah, 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 multi-million, money swirling all about for Biden's presidential coffers. Do you actually think that there is an obvious disparity, like there is in this country, where some people argue Labour isn't for the working class anymore. The Democrats certainly aren't, are they? Well, I think when it comes to American politics, politics and money are very much linked together in a way which is not in the same in the United Kingdom. I don't think you can say that the Republican Party isn't swirling around with money either when you've literally got a billionaire who's probably going to be the next president of the United States of America. I think it's a problem with the American political system, not necessarily a problem unique to the Democrats. But I will say on this, this particular issue, can we just call a Trump win a win? I mean, I'm not a supporter mm. of Trump at all. Yeah. But mm. in this instance, you know, he was at this, he, he was at an event for a, a fallen police officer, yeah. whilst the other former Democratic presidents were at a Hollywood knees up. I mean, mm. the optics, terrible. This is a Trump win. Let's just call it that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Al Albie's absolutely right. And you know, in the run up to an election year, when the polls are so tight, they might not be in this country at the minute, but you know, certainly in America, when anything can happen, you've got to be on your game. You've got to make sure that every vote counts. And having these kinds of, you know, shindigs, as you put it, versus, you know, an optics of President Trump actually paying tribute to someone. Look, this matters to the voters. But and it, it, every, it does, it this, does matter. Is this political naivety then on the Democrats' yeah. part? Do you yes. think it was organised by Benjamin Butterworth? Well, I, <laughs> any, any, anything Benjamin organises and invites me to, I tend to decline. <laughs> 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 right, 
I mean, I, the only reason that he will have done this is for the optics. But of course, it's so easily done the other way around. You know, he has endless rallies. Uh, you know, few few successful yeah. people really it's like ordinary him. Ordinary but... people, not Lizzo. Oh, oh, come, come off it. That's just complete yeah. nonsense. Darren, he's a billionaire with his own members club. He's not a man of yes, the people. So he can't be bought. Biden is bought by vested interests. So but you were like saying what? that Trump was a Big man of green. people. Do, 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 do most ordinary men have their own members clubs in, in Florida? Well, I have no idea. I've never been to Florida. <laughs> yes. I think the answer is no, yeah. Darren. That's what you're looking for. I'll take then. you. I'll take, Gary, I'll take you. I'll take you. I like the governor. <laughs> you know, this was this event with with uh, the three presidents with Lizzo was a fundraiser, and that is an absolutely essential part of the U.S. No, it system. was a sop to TikTok. Look at President Biden, isn't he hip? Down with the kids whilst he's walking around needing a bloody Zimmer frame. I well, actually, I don't think you should hate on the elderly like that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the tables have turned. Right, so we're going to have to leave that one there, but I'm sure the viewers have got plenty of opinions on that.